Let's look at an example of finding correlation and interpretation. So what we have here is data that's recorded um, in terms of a destination for Baltimore, Maryland. And what they did is they took different possible destinations flying out of Baltimore and then evaluated the distance away from Baltimore and then the airfare that was paid. So thinking about explanatory and response variables. So again, explanatory variable is our x variable, whereas response is y. So we can think of, would distance respond to airfare? It's like, would distance change based on the airfare that's paid? Or would airfare change based on distance? Now that sentence of airfare changes based on distance, that makes a little more sense. Distance is kind of set. <laughs> like, if you choose a city, there's only going to be one distance away from Baltimore for that city. So it's not going to be influenced by any other variables. So with that, that really shows an independent variable. So distance is going to be our idea of x, because it'll be operating independently. But airfare can change based on the airline. And the, what we're going to look for in this data is, are they increasing airfare with the farther that they're traveling and things like that. So for our explanatory variable, that will be distance. And for our response variable, that will be airfare. So when you find those, you can start getting your graph going for making your scatter plot. So I have distance along that x-axis and airfare along the y-axis. And what we can do is start plotting points. It's like for Atlanta at 576, 178, just getting a dot close to there. Boston, 370, 138, somewhere about there. And then we'll do the rest of these points. So I'm going to go ahead and pause and fill out the rest of this graph, and you can too. Okay, so your graph should be looking something like this. Um, now, for passing the conditions, basically what we want to see is, is there any clear curvature to our data? Is there anything that looks kind of like this if we try to fit a line to it? Which, no, it looks, it's not super linear, but it's roughly linear. So, um, yes, we do pass the conditions because the data is roughly linear. So then from there, we can think about correlation for this data. Now, overall, looking at this data, if I had to draw a line for it, maybe something kind of like this. So when you draw your line, what you're trying to do is fit as much of the data as you can, meaning draw a line that's as close to all the data as possible, kind of simultaneously. So there's kind of a few points kind of far away pulling this line, like the two values down there. And then we have this value up here. So um, not super linear, but we can get an idea of a line. So when I draw that line, though, what I should notice is that it has a positive slope to it. So we have this increasing trend, which makes sense for data. You would think like the further you travel, the higher the airfare you would pay, typically. So um, with that, we know it's positive. So if we're trying to choose a value for R, this negative 0.7142 can't be a possibility because we should have a negative direction to it. Then it's a matter of kind of weak, moderate, or strong. Now that R equals 0 0.9987, it's so close to one, our data would have to appear very linear for that. And we don't have that. There's a decent amount of spread here. So with that, we would not have 0.9987. Then that 0.2145 would look very scattered. So the fact that I could start to put the line together for this 
makes it not weak. That would almost be our kind of blob scenario where we have no idea how to start a line. So with this, this r equals 0 0.6953, that's likely our correlation for this data. So to interpret that, if we think about where we land on the number line there, it would be positive and moderate. So what we could say is the association between airfare and distance is positive and moderate strength. Um, so that's how we would interpret the association just based on where we're landing on that negative one to one number line. Then coefficient of determination. So we're going to look at r squared, which is that 0.6953 squared, which will give us a 0.4834. So to interpret that value, we'll have 48.34% of the variability in and then our y value which was airfare so how airfare changes can be explained by distance and that would be our interpretation so here's an example of how we'll use correlation. We'll get that scatter plot going, get an estimate for R, and then what we can do is once we have R, find that coefficient of determination.